Hey guys, it's me Helena and welcome back to the channel where we talk all about astrocartography and locational astrology. And in this video, I wanted to make a follow-up video on my predictions for Biden in 2024 and specifically the election. I'm going to be talking about two key times in 2024, specifically April at the time of the eclipse, April 2024, as well as November 5th. 2024, the day of the election. Before we get into today's video, hi, I'm Helena and I'm an astrocartographer, otherwise known as a locational astrologer, and I specialize in the astrology of place and location. I've been studying astrology since 2011, but it was when I moved to France in 2018 that I learned about astrocartography and I fell in love. I'm a huge traveler, I love looking at maps, and I love studying geography, and it was just a perfect combination of my love for astrology, timing, as well as location, and the astrology of place is my favorite thing in the world, and it's what I specialize in. If you ever wanted to book a reading with me, I offer astrocartography readings, natal chart readings, and zodiacal releasing readings. You can find all of that on my website in the link in the description below. And I have lots of free content on my blog as well as two courses in locational astrology. So if you wanted to learn how to understand the energy of place, understand the quality of life in regards to your astrology in places in the world and understanding where is home for you, where are the best places in the world for you, you can learn more in my courses. I have a beginner's astrocartography course, which you can find down below as well. And in case you're wondering, I am a Western astrologer using the tropical zodiac whole sign house system and I use Hellenistic techniques so this is a great website timeanddate.com but there is a eclipse map feature so you can see where the eclipse is happening on the world on the globe and we can see we've got a total solar eclipse happening April 8th of 2024 it's going right in right across the United States um looks like it's not hitting DC exactly dc is just off of it but it's really damn close to this path where the eclipse is happening this eclipse that's happening april 8th is really affecting joe biden um and the reason for that is we've got the uranus jupiter conjunction which is a big deal um you know i think of technology booms I think of internet tech things expanding, whether that's cryptocurrency or some sort of technological innovation. Um, I think it was Steve Jobs who was born during a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, but Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions are kind of magical in a way. There's kind of a, a hint of expansion and innovation and opportunity. And um, it's a big sudden thing. It's unexpected and it's sudden. Um, and this is happening for Joe Biden in his sixth house of health, illness, and work routines. And we can see here that the ruler of his sixth house of health and work routines is in the 12th house of undercover secret behind the scenes things. The 12th house is a secret part of the chart. Um, it's, you know, often with a lot of people in politics or who work in secret or work undercover in some way, um, can be a lot of 12th house themes here. And we can see the ruler of his house of work, health and illness is in that 12th house. Now the Jupiter Uranus transits a big deal. You know, Uranus takes about seven, eight years to transit through a sign, 84 years around the entire wheel. We get Jupiter, which moves in a sign every year, 12 years to go around the wheel. You know, when we get an alignment like this of, you know, slow moving planets, these are bigger deals because they're slow moving planets. Look at this Uranus at 21 Taurus. It's opposing his natal Mercury at 21 Scorpio. Chaotic, unexpected words, communication, secrets coming out. Jupiter also there making it a bigger thing than it is big expansion um abundance of something Uranus is also opposing his natal sun now it is about six degrees off but still Uranus is opposing his natal sun. And the reason why this is especially important for Joe Biden is because Mercury is the ruler of his career, public reputation, and social status. It's the ruler of his career. And Mercury is also the perfected planet for the year. As he's 81 years old, Mercury is the most important planet of the year for him. And so when we see a tight 
Uranus opposition to his natal Mercury, ruler of his career and the perfected planet. I mean, this is a big deal. This is not something to be taken lightly. Is Mercury, which is his activated planet for this year, because he's in a Virgo um, and Mercury perfected year, is um, Mercury is squaring Jupiter exactly at the time of the eclipse. His Mercury's, I mean, Mercury will be retrograde at this time, 25 Aries, and it's squaring his natal Jupiter. Jupiter in his chart is the ruler of his body and his physical body. He is a sad rising three degrees ascendant, meaning Jupiter is the ruler of his body and his like physical body. Is he doing well? Is he not doing well physically? Mercury retrograde in Aries at 25 degrees on the day of the eclipse. It's squaring exactly his natal Jupiter. All this to say, this doesn't look easy for him at all when we're looking at the spring of 2024. Now, I also want to talk about Kamala Harris during this time. We can see here that Saturn is in her 10th house of career. Big deal. Saturn is duty, obligation, responsibility. Taking more responsibility in your line of career and work. We can also see that she's in a Jupiter return. Jupiter returns are a big deal because they happen once every 12 years. They represent growth, expansion, something, an opportunity coming up. Where are you being expanded in your life is the question for Jupiter returns. Jupiter is in her 12th house, which is the ruler of her 10th house of career. 12th house, this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which is happening for all of us, it's happening in her 12th house. She's in a Jupiter return, opportunity, expansion, growth. And that Jupiter is the ruler of her career, where she's having that Saturn on her MC, which is more responsibility in her line of work, her reputation, her public image, her career. There's more responsibility she take, she's taking on. And it's opposing Uranus and it's opposing Pluto. This is power. This is power. This is unexpected, sudden power themes. Um, and to top it all off, she's on a Jupiter return. And then we add the other, other element. Let's, let's look at Kamala Harris's, uh, activated. She's got Venus activated and Taurus that year. Look at that. What makes this more interesting is Taurus is the activated house for her year. This year, when all this is going down, this eclipse on April 8th, we can see she's 59, Taurus is activated, that part of the chart is activated and Venus transits are activated. There's Taurus. What's happening in her 12th house of Taurus? Jupiter return, expansion, growth, opportunity. It's activated with the Jupiter return, conjunct Uranus, which is sudden unexpected things happening behind the scenes in that 12th house hidden matter secrets. And it's activated for her. We can also look at Kamala Harris's zodiacal releasing, which is an ancient Hellenistic timing technique that times a biography of someone's life into sections. I have several videos on this. You can check out my zodiacal releasing videos and my blog posts. Um, I'm also making a course on it. So if you want to learn about it from me, feel free to join my newsletter in the link in the description to be updated when that course is available. So look at this. She's in a minor peak period, started it at the end of 2020. Um, starting November 10th, which was just a few weeks ago, Kamala just recently activated a moderate peak period on a level two in her lot of spirit um, from November 10th of 2023 to July 2nd of 2025. Very active time for her in career and work matters. Um, so we can see that. And then look at this. Right after that eclipse, she enters a major peak period in career on a level three as well. Um, right after this whole eclipse thing that goes on. Um, and then she's got a loosening of the bond on a preparatory period on a level four, which is like a new beginning or a turning point or a pivot where she's starting something new. That's happening April 15th of 2024 on a level four. So basically the dialogue releasing is we're looking at a biography of someone's life, chapters, sections, paragraphs, sentences, years, decades, days, weeks, things like that. 
Um, so we're seeing multiple things here. We're seeing her zodiacal releasing is really interesting. Um, being in a moderate peak period for a couple of years, and then specifically having that loosening of the bond on a new beginning around that time of the eclipse. During the eclipse itself, she's in a moderate peak period for those few days. But that uh, loosening of the bond is really interesting to me. I'm really curious to see if there's anything in the news that comes out after that eclipse around that week of April 15th to April 18th, specifically, um, with that uh, preparatory period loosening of the bond that's happening there in Aquarius. This is a really important time in, for her in life. Like this is the pinnacle of her career is from 2020 to 2032. Now you may be wondering, is a peak period good or bad? It's it's neither. Um, a peak period is just very active, defining, important. There's a lot of activity and busyness for someone in their life. Um, it's kind of like those parts of the person's biography when there's just a lot going on and a lot that's happening to them. So um, a lot's happening for her in 2024 and the first half of 2025. I am curious to see if there is some sort of issue or difficulty for Biden in regards to health and illness around the eclipse of April 2024. And I wonder if Kamala is taking more power or if she's not taking more power, more responsibility in her work in some way with this Saturn in the 10th, the Jupiter return, um, that eclipse that's happening, uh, I'm curious to see if that is going to be a theme that we see in the spring of 2024. Now let's get to the election, right? All right, now let's talk about Joe Biden around the time of the election of 2024. Well, he's in a new beginning. He's in a prep period um, starting April of 2024. That's interesting. Of April 2023 to April 13th of 2024, he's in a loosening of the bond on a level two. A level two loosening of the bond on a completion period. This is a big deal because this means something is drastically pivoting in his life. Like he's finishing something, he's letting go, he's quitting, he's stepping down. Um, anytime we see this little asterisk, which is a loosening of the bond, which is a pivot change in direction, when it's on a completion period like this, which is the period after a peak period, it can signify a letting go, quitting, or moving on from something. It's kind of leaving something rather than starting or initiate, initiating something. If it were a loosening of the bond on a peak period, that can be an up level. If it were a loosening of the bond on a prep period, that can be a new beginning or an initiation. But this is not. This is on a completion period. So I am wondering what is ending or what is he letting go during this time, right? Then we get that eclipse. Then a couple of days later, April 13th, he starts a new beginning. Uh, April 13th of 2024 on his lot of spirits at Ico releasing. So again, we're seeing more themes of like, what is shifting for him? What is ending? And what is he a new beginning that he's starting in some way? Mercury and Virgo will still be activated. So we're looking at that Virgo 10th house. We can see here in his 10th house on the chart, this is where he has his activated house. His 10th house is turned on or lit up for the year. And we can see there's not really much happening on November 5th. We move to November 6th, still nothing happening. Is Where's that Mercury? Well, Mercury's on his ascendant. His Mercury is in opposition to Uranus, which is unexpected sudden communication or shifts in communication or things that are coming out in the news or, you know, writing, speaking, internet. Mercury rules, Mercury rules the internet and it rules the news. It rules the messenger uh messages ideas communication it's opposed by his natal uranus that day which is unexpected sudden chaotic uh messaging or news information or or things that are happening in the news think of transiting mercury opposing a natal uranus i think of um being open-minded not being rigid being flexible to sudden unexpected information that's coming out and it's important to be very flexible and adjust your sail when a wave appears, so to speak, because, you know, it's unexpected. It's always Uranus is unexpected things. So we're seeing that tight opposition that day to a perfected planet on the day of the election. Um, we can also see that unlike Trump's chart, there's nothing really incredible about this, you know, 10th house or this 11th house. The 11th house is the followers, the fan base the rewards from the career, the people, the fan base that follow the person. The South Node is there. 
And the south node is a release or a letting go or in traditional astrology, apathy or carelessness or moving away from something. The north node is what you're going toward. The 11th house, there's almost like, I can't help but wonder if there's um, a lessening of the fan base or a lack of support. Saturn is training as Mars. So enduring hard work, he's determined, he's going at it, he's not quitting, he's not going to give in. Um, you know, there's a lot of steadfast endurance with that hard work. And the other really nice thing about his chart is transiting Neptune is at 27 Pisces and it's trining his natal sun at 27 Scorpio. There's a hopefulness. There's an idealism. There is a, an optimistic hope. And that can be really pleasant, you know, very creative. It's, 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 it's visioning something. It's, it's nice. Trining the sun uh, can be very hopeful, very optimistic, but is it real? You know, Neptune is never really reality. It's always kind of a, a delusionment or illusions. Um, and it's making such a tight aspect to his natal sun. You might be watching this thinking, why is the time zone in France? Well, that's because I live in France, so I have my settings set to where I am living in France, but, but we can also see the Washington DC settings. We see the only thing that really shifts or changes is the moon. By the time we move to end of day, November 5th, 2024, day of the election, the end of the day, around almost 11 PM Washington DC time, we can see that the moon has moved into Capricorn. Again, the moon ingressing to Capricorn from Sag is not a big thing. The moon moves every few days. It is a very quick moving luminary. But I did want to mention for any of you guys who are confused seeing that. There are a lot of shakeups and changes with Joe Biden in the spring of 2024. The eclipse happening, you could see that eclipse was going right through the Northeast of the United States, seeing that Jupiter Uranus conjunction opposing his natal sun in the sixth house of health and illness. Um, I, I do think there is going to be a sudden unexpected shakeup, whether it's in regard to his health or there is a change in his work dynamics. Also with Saturn transiting his fourth house, change in residence. Uh, issues with residents, delays or challenges in terms of the living situation. We're seeing that theme come up again. Same with Kamala Harris. I mean, she's got major things going on with her career. Seeing these transits, seeing the correlations between Kamala Harris's chart, Joe Biden's chart, and the eclipse of, in 2024 in April, I can't help but wonder, is there going to be some sort of passing of the torch, some sort of giving power to Kamala in some way. And if that's the case, will Kamala be running against Donald Trump? Time will tell. And I'm really, really looking at April 2024 to determine whether we go from here. If Biden is running against Trump, I do think Trump will win over Biden. I share this information from a neutral perspective, an unbiased perspective, no emotion coloring, my predictions, my thoughts. And it's really important to not let my desires, my emotions color my predictive abilities as an astrologer. I think a lot of astrologers, they get swayed by the politics and tarot card readers too. I, I watch a lot of astrologers and tarot card readers on YouTube and you could see they get very emotionally invested and it really sways the opinion and makes me not want to watch quite frankly, which is why I really approach this from a non biased perspective, a very neutral observer perspective of just sharing the message, sharing what I see and relaying the information, reflecting that back. I have to say, obviously, that this video is made for entertainment purposes only um, and all of that, uh, but take what you will from this. Um, this is what I'm seeing in the chart. Um, and I hope that this gives some grounded perspective. Again, I am looking at the transits for the election in April, 2024. Trump's chart this year is very difficult, very, very challenging in 2024. And we're going to see a lot of that play out throughout the year of 2024. But when we get to election time, when we get to the fall of 2024, it looks very good for Trump in a lot of different ways, a lot of, you know, ways that there is support for him. And so if you're down there in the comments, like how in the world is going to happen? You tell me, I have no idea. 
what I'm seeing based on the election for 2024, it's very favorable for him. So, um, you know, we're, I'm recording this now. It's November, what is it? I don't even know what day it is. 21st. November 21st. It's November 21st, 2023. We've got a year to go. A lot can happen in one year. A lot can change in one year. So, um, you know, what you're seeing in the news now in March, in June, in July, may not be showing what will happen in November. So, you know, this is why it's important to look at this objectively and not let emotion and bias color our opinions and our perspectives and our predictive abilities. So anyway, I hope that this video helps clarify some things. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to make a video on Biden's chart. We'll see how that plays out. Let's keep an eye on that eclipse, April 8th of 2024, yeah? All right, have a magical day. And uh, if you wanted to get in touch with me or read my content, include all the links down below. You can book a reading with me, take my courses. Excited to work with you. If your intuition feels it's a fit, have a magical day and happy travels. Bye.